A while back, I reviewed the Ishin Trash Can. Uh, this is a one or two cell micro quad. Uh, it's very robust. This is the original frame, but the F4 flight controller gave me some issues on occasion. I had to replace it twice. However, it's still been my micro quad of choice when flying indoors or in places where I can't be extremely loud with a full size five inch. The only thing that sucks is if you want to record your flight, it's just goggle DVR, nothing special. Enter the Ishin Cinecan, look at that. So this is like the big brother of the trash can right here. And this is a 85 millimeter 4K Cinewoop, very capable, a lot of fun, three cell or four cell, and so far I've been really enjoying it. Um, so you have two cameras here, one is your FPV camera and one is the 4K camera, and there's a micro SD card slot right there that allows you to record straight to the micro SD card, it also has a Wi-Fi module built in so you can uh, use your phone and set what you want to record in, whether it's 4K at 30 frames a second or 2.7K at 60 frames a second. Now, I'm not gonna say that the image is perfect. There is a little bit of warbling that goes on, a little bit of oscillation and jello. Um, one of the things that they give you to actually help with that is a neutral density filter right here. This is an ND8. And if you watch some of my other videos about neutral density filters, um, basically they just darken your image. They don't color your image at all, at least they shouldn't, but they will darken your image. And so we put them over the lens of both cameras, just like that. I put nice fingerprints on there, nice. But uh, clean those off and then you'll have a lower shutter speed on your video. If it's full sun or something, you wouldn't really do this if it's in a dark room or a dark environment or outside late at night. But um, having a lower shutter speed will actually help maybe with some of those oscillations in your video. But anyway, um, aside from that, it's really, really cool. Uh, I've been enjoying it in the parking garage, around my house. It has an XT30 connection right here. So a battery like uh, what it comes with, this is the Ishin 300 milliamp hour three cell battery. So we just slip it right in there. And that's how that fits. Now it is also a four cell quad. So if you wanted to run a four cell battery, you probably wouldn't fit it within this uh, pre-made cradle. But what you could do is use their included battery strap right here and strap a four cell battery right here on the bottom of this battery cradle. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that battery placement, but that's what you could do. Now this one is the Free Sky receiver version. They also have Fly Sky and Spectrum and stuff like that. They also have a No RX version where you can put your own receiver in, and then you can put something like this, which is a Crossfire Nano with a Mortal T or something like that. I may just try to do that pretty soon because I'm not a fan of the low range of the Free Sky receivers on these Crazy B F4 Pro version three boards. Um, now the version three board is much more robust than the version that was in the trash can. So I don't think we're gonna be blowing out the five volt regulator on these like we were with the trash can, but um, the, the re signal reception of this little tiny uh, you know, antenna for the Free Sky receiver is just pitiful. Um, now it's not as bad as the Larva X, which I reviewed previously. That one was terrible. This one you can actually get by with and fly around in some environments. I flew around the entire perimeter of one level of a parking garage with this one, and the video held up as well as the signal. Uh, I would not have tried that with the Larva X. Now, as stated before, this records onto the micro SD card 4K or 2.7K at various frame rates and aspect ratios as well. It uses the new Caddx Tarsier Cam DVR, and that's what's built in here. Now, I haven't taken this all apart. Luckily, you don't have to to bind, uh, start the binding process. You can plug this into your computer, power it on, plug, uh, plug a USB, you know, and then uh, in your CLI commands, follow the instructions that came with the Cinecan to enter binding mode, and then you can uh, bind your radio. Otherwise, you're gonna have to find the boot button, which means you're gonna have to take apart this stack, which is pretty involved. The motors are 1103s, uh, 7,000 kV, and they feel pretty good. Now, I've only flown these at, on 3S. I think 4S, I might have a bit more of a punchy and powerful experience, but um, so far, I've been enjoying that flying this at 3S. And for a Cinecan, like a Cinewoop, I don't really feel like I need to fly breakneck speed with this. Um, one of the reasons is, if you do encounter some of that jello, uh, maybe flying faster would make that even worse. 
I have found that some of the mid-range oscillation is present though, so when I was trying to really fly around my house nice and smooth and cine-like, I was getting a little bit of the oscillation. The 30 frame per second video option is a little bit underwhelming if you're doing a lot of fast freestyle, a lot of flips and dips and tricks, um, but if you're just cruising along, 30 looks great. If you are doing a lot of fast freestyle with this, um, then you probably wanna do 60 frames a second. One thing that I did change, and, and part of it was out of necessity, I'll show you what, what it came with. This is the original antenna for the VTX. There's a little prop strike right there, and I actually cut off a little bit of the active element. Um, I think the outer coating is still there, but the active element has been severed and I was getting worse video. So here's what happened. The Cinecan ships with the VTX antenna sticking out just like this. Sticking out right the back horizontally. And then they had it twist tied or zip tied right about here, but underneath this little tail. And I thought that might be a weak point. I, I suspected that that would be where I would first, you know, encounter an issue. I didn't know that was going to happen my first crash. So this VTX antenna hit one of these props, either this one or this one, and severed part of the active element, which means that I had to go and quickly order some extra uh, antenna. Uh, and I just kind of bent it around and now it sticks up on top. And um, it's nice and flexible in a crash. So I like this system a little bit better than what it was shipped with. I'm gonna plug this in real quick and show you. So we're assuming that you've already bound your radio to it. And again, just refer to the paperwork. Um, now the paperwork does not tell you how to use the app. So this is the Cadix FPV app. I'm gonna start screen recording on my phone. Now, if you look right here, you can see this green blinking light. If it's blinking, it means it's recording. And the color depends on what settings you have. In order to stop the recording, we press this itty bitty little button. You see there's two buttons right there? We're gonna press the one on the right. So I'm gonna stop recording by hitting the one on the right, and now we have a solid green light. Now I'm gonna hold that button with my finger. It's hard to do, but you can do it with your finger. We do it for eight seconds until that light turns on right there. Now we're blinking green on this side. That means we have our Wi-Fi turned on. Now I'm gonna to go to my phone, go to settings and network, and find my Wi-Fi here. Now I'm gonna open up the Cadix FPV app, which you can download. I'm using Android, obviously. So if I do it like this, this is a live feed of the room. Now, this is a 4K camera, uh, but it's also four by three. You can see on my cell phone here, this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio that it's showing. So this is stretched out, I'm not that fat. They have various uh, resolutions. You can find your resolution here. So uh, right now we're in 1440p, 60 frames a second. Now 1440 would be a four by three aspect ratio. If we were to go to um, 2.7K or, or 4K by uh, 30 frames a second, now we're doing 16 by nine aspect ratio. Um, but you can do a bunch of different things. Oh, you can also do 720, 120 frames a second. I did not realize that. Um, you can also do 1080p at 90 frames a second. So you can get some slow-mo shots as well. We're gonna do 4K 30. And, uh, but you can see all the different settings. I mean, we got our white balance, we've got exposure, ISO, EIS, which you can toggle on and off. Uh, so that's electric image stabilization. Now, I did not use that for any of the shots in this video because I wanted to show you how smooth it is without it. EIS will crop in on the image. And if you're already shooting 4K 30, that's not a very wide field of view, let's just say that. So if you're looking for something like SuperView GoPro style footage, you don't wanna use EIS and you probably don't wanna shoot in 4K 30. That's just how it's gonna be. Anyway, to get out of that menu and to get out of the Wi-Fi function, we're just gonna unplug ugh, right there and then we're gonna plug her back in. And now we've selected 4K 30, this, this light should be a different color. Um, so as it comes on, now it's a red blinking light. So if you can remember all the different colors, green is like 2.7K or something like that. Um, red is going to be your 4K. One thing to think about with the micro SD card is uh, to make sure it's 32 gigabytes. Um, if you're using a 64 gigabyte card, it may not work. Quad will start recording with the micro SD card in as soon as you plug it in and you'll see that light blinking. Now, if you wanna keep that recording, you have to stop using that same button before you unplug. If you unplug this while it's still recording, you'll lose the footage, and that's happened a few times to me. 
So make sure that you stop recording before you unplug, otherwise you will lose your recording on the micro SD card. The VTX is switchable between 25 and 200 milliwatts, which is great. And running 200 milliwatts doesn't seem to drain the battery too much. I mean, it's noticeable, I guess, but at the same time, I was still able to fly at a decent uh, amount of time at 200 milliwatts. Now, just to compare weights, the trash can is 35 grams. The Larva X is 50 grams on the nose. And the Cinecan, 64 grams. So you're definitely gonna find that this one flies a little bit less like a sports car, you know, a little bit more heavy. And maybe that's partially because I'm doing three cell batteries. If you were to put a four cell on here, I think you'd have as much power as you needed. Uh, however, with 7,000 kV motors on 4S, that seems pretty quick to me. I, I don't know if I would need anything faster for, for a Cinewhoop where I'm trying to get cinematic footage. I mean, that's it's part of the name, Cine. I haven't actually had any uh, fail safes with this one and I've, I've pushed it pretty far around a parking garage just yesterday, so. Anyway, it also comes with an OSD menu board and also some extra props and some hardware and a little, uh, you know, screwdriver, <laughs> trying to think of the name. And finally, the case. And I always like Ishin's cases. Uh, whether it's the trash can case or, you know, something like this, I always like that it's nice and compact. It includes space for, you know, five or six batteries here or here, and then all of your different stuff, your documentation. With the 4K camera, with the micro SD card built, you know, uh, slot built in, and the app that can allow you to dial in your settings and your white balance and get really good footage out of this little guy for $165 is a win. And I'm definitely gonna fly this a lot more. Now the question is, can you vlog with this? <laughs> so let's say you pick up your quad, just like this, you finish flying. Can you talk to the camera? Can you, can you provide insight into your flight? There is audio and uh, it's 4K videos, 30 frames a second. I mean, hey, that's vlog material right there. I haven't done many high punch outs or anything or very long range with this. If you really wanted to do that, like I said earlier, you probably want to convert this thing over to Crossfire. I've seen some people mount it like this. Uh, let's see if I can show you. Kind of like that, where the Crossfire, the uh, T, Mortal T, is going uh, width-wise like that. Now, if you're not set up for Crossfire on your radio, you could go the XM Plus route. This is a FreeSky XM Plus on a ViFly X150 here, and it's a prime example of something you could do and still get better reception than the little uh, F4 version three crazy B built-in receiver. The problems that I've found with the F4 Pro from the trash can have not been present so far anyway uh, with the Cinecan. So the crazy B F4 Pro version three has definitely been uh, acting the way it's supposed to. No issues and I'm happy to hear that. The only thing is the integrated FreeSky receiver isn't as good as I think it could be. Um, again, not as bad as the Larva X which is absolutely atrocious range, but this guy is decent and you might actually have a good time flying free sky or similar receiver type uh, with the Cinecan. So check the link in the video description to the Cinecan. Um, this is from banggood.com. Again, they were the first people to get me into FPV with the Ishin uh, X220 Wizard back in the day. I attribute some of my FPV history and development to Banggood. So anyway, thank you to them for supporting the channel. And until next time, Happy flying.